Hi guys, today we're going to react to City by the Sixters. This is a buy me a copy request from Dan LaMarche, first time requester. Thank you, Dan, for making this request. Thanks, Dan. We appreciate the support. People are trying to police Innocent soul dies underneath The world around is not your dream And moral ruins you see are real For every man and never hears You know the topic, you know about this different from feels the first song from the sixers we reacted to i kind of get the feeling it's actually a very pleasant feeling because they're relatively a new band i get the feeling that they're trying to find their sound it's not a revelation or anything but i can hear it in this song it's a cool thing to witness i mean with a new band especially when they're uh, this proficient and the lead vocalist's voice is becoming more and more recognizable even though we only heard her once it's a very cool song i love the vibe i love the rhythm it kind of reminds me Something of the 90s, I can't really put my finger on it, but I'm super digging this. It's fun and it grabs you from the first second. I agree with most of what you said. There's um, definitely like a 90s sort of feel to it. I'm not sure exactly like if they're trying to find their sound or if it sounds experimental or if it just doesn't necessarily sound to us, you know, like they've found their sound yet. So they're influenced by a lot of stuff, obviously. I would still place this somewhere along the same subgenre as, as Fields, but there's something about the approach to this, to the music video, and something that feels a little bit different in the sound. There is a, a feeling, though, that something that you hit on, that this is kind of a band in its infancy, but I, I keep thinking, if this is them in their infancy, where's the potential going to take them? Because they're already fantastic. Mm -hmm. How much better are they gonna get you know what i mean they're gonna be amazing i'm getting a similar feel to the warning as far as where they can get to so the words world domination pop to mind and it's like they have all the tools for this complete package i haven't quite worked this band out yet whether some things are just the way they like to write keeping things ambiguous and a little bit all over the place sometimes or maybe it's a language thing i'm not sure but i like it i like the way they write i like the fact that i can't work it out with the warning it's a bit clearer maybe the english is a bit better maybe not but there's something that uh, makes me think about the warning when i think about Sixters now and that's probably like the highest compliment because I think that's where they can get to they are early on in in their sort of formation so I think in a few years they're going to be massive well it remains to be seen but it, it does look promising because the way they perform off each other I think they have a, a natural talent at least from what we've heard so far to create songs that are grabbing I wouldn't be surprised if it's a thematic thing within their uh, writing and the way they compose their music as well something about that sound we talked about it before a recognizable sound something when you hear on the radio then you crank up the volume immediately because it's a song that you remember or something memorable about their particular signature 
that I absolutely love. At the moment, I, I think it's mostly uh, the lead vocalist's voice that is the most recognizable because, again, they are young, so they are influenced by other bands. Both Fields and City sort of remind you of something, but you don't necessarily know what it is exactly. But it's like they haven't like invented something new as yet or something like that or, or found a signature that is that exact and different. But, but that's not a bad thing because a lot of bands have to start from basically making music that they like, which is what we're hearing. And I'm so far loving it. There's just so much promise here. The potential is, is off the chain. The texture of the lead vocalist's voice reminds me of that singer uh, LaRue. They have similar signature in their voices. Yeah, I know what you mean. There's an element uh, that is similar uh, yeah, in the way they use their voice. When both people are in dying breath Nobody helps him in this worst case You got to judge him in sinner's face To burn the body and devil flame And now my image is passing by Rule the death who were taught a lie The truth is power in the right hands I'm city girl that now Excelente. Beautiful. In both fields and here in City, um, there's one thing that probably worth noting is that after listening to both songs, I just love their energy. It's really fun. It's really cool. There's something really cool about them. I just think that the uh, sky's the limit for this band. As I mentioned before, because I kind of feel that they're trying to find their sound, their particular signature, as you said, it feels like they're a band at its infant stages. I'm filled with anticipation to see what other things we're going to hear from them because it looks like they are experimenting. I, I get the sense that each and every song that we're going to react to next is going to sound quite, to me at least, different, a different amalgamation of, of how they use their talent and skill set. Beautiful. Regarding the lyrics, we've uh, experienced this in fields as well. It feels like that they're fond of ambiguous writing, call it. Uh, it's not something you can immediately identify as you uh, listen to the song or even if you uh, look through the actual lyrics. I am having trouble to hone in on what they're trying to say, and I think it's deliberate. It feels like they're trying to create an intriguing sense of confusion. It feels like a form of a riddle, trying to encapsulate the entire song, judging by certain lines that caught my eye. When the song starts, when poor people are trying to please, innocent soul dies underneath, the world around is not your dream, and moral ruins you see are real. Because we know they're Ukrainian, uh, what I read so far kind of had me thinking about the war. I mean, they can't not be influenced uh, by the war that's going on there. Maybe they wrote that song about that, but it's ambiguous enough to get you thinking, what does it mean uh, the world around is not your dream? Maybe they mean uh, reality won't align with what you wanted to. Uh, maybe that's what it means. I don't know. Maybe it's a, it's a general thing uh, to, to, to wake people up to, to the severity and, and coldness of reality. I don't know. I've said this before. I think that the writing style leaves um, things open to interpretation. Even though I can't pin down a meaning that I'm sort of locked in on, I actually like that. It makes me think every time I read it, it gives it uh, uh, an ambiguous feel that I actually enjoy. And I think that um, they engage in what is sort of my favorite thing about writing, which is subtext. They say something that might relate to something, but the true meaning for them, it, it could be something else. As, as you said, because we know they are from the Ukraine, 
and with the situation there with the war and we know that they fled the country i think they are now in germany we try to kind of place that onto the lyrics because we know you know who's behind the song but at the same time i also try to think what if i didn't know if i didn't know that they were ukrainian if there was no war if those words were just coming at me with no uh, context, how would I see it? That first verse you read, you know, when poor people are trying to please, innocent soul dies underneath, the world around is not your dream, and moral ruins you see are real, got me thinking about social media, the current uh, world politics, and how people are trying to please others and are changing their politics altogether and what it's causing around the world you know moral ruins you see are real it seems to me that it is going up a little bit against the sort of extreme left and what is happening there i'm not sure maybe that's just me and again like you say it's very possible that this is about the war and about all of that it goes on from there to say forever mine and ever his you know the topic you know about this the taken freedom is closed in cage for her this battle is now arranged so again that could be talking about freedom around the world and what is happening around the world and with social media with social politics with left right and everything that's going on and it could be just about the ukraine and russia and what's happening there it's a tough one. Reading further into the lyrics, the things you think about can either strengthen, you can either go into that direction and, and find other things. Because if you're looking for something, you're going to find it, even if, if, even if it's not there. Because the chorus says, don't even try to run, don't even try to cry. If all the pain around will break your heart as spike, which I'm not sure what that means. Uh, fight till the broken bones, fight till the broken wings. So broken bones, I get it. Broken wings, uh, a metaphor for freedom. Fight until you, know, you lose that freedom. You lose that freedom. It's it's okay to lose that freedom to, to win the fight. Not sure what that means. We've said it in the past about films. The measure of a good film is if it stays with you after you've done watching it. This applies the same in song form. The material here just sticks with you because you have to delve deep into your imagination in order to try and, and find what they mean. I think that's the funnest part about that song, that it gets your brain cranking thinking in different directions. What you said before about references to world politics, other lines in there caught my eye in a fashion that strengthened that notion. There's a message here, but I can't really make it out or there isn't only one interpretation for it. But when poor people are in dying bath, nobody helps them in this worst case. Your gods have judged and even sinners' backs to burn their bodies in devil's flames. And now my image is passing by through all the dead who were taught to lie. The truth is power in right hands. I'm city girl that never fails. What caught my eye in all that was through all the dead who were taught to lie. So from that line, what I took is they're, maybe they're talking about propaganda and not just propaganda, mm -hmm. but propaganda that is ensued by sinister conspirers by bad people, by people who want to hurt other people or hurt other people. And it's actually like a warning sign that going along with the lie or a set of lies will bring to one's demise or to, a, to, a, to people's demise. So through all the dead people who were taught to lie. So another possible interpretation. It kind of feels like it is talking about, obviously, their situation and the war and all that, but it might connect because it might be talking about how propaganda is used in war to justify war, etc., and how it's kind of like a vicious circle where war is used in propaganda, in world politics propaganda, I should say. So, you know what I mean? It's like, who knows? It's a tough one, but what I like about it is that it brings all these thoughts to mind for you, for me and possibly for other people who are uh, reading the lyrics, listening to the song. And I find that interesting. I think that's what's artistic about music, uh, about other forms of art that just make you think. So these girls at a very young age have that in them, you know, they have that skill of writing in a way that would make you think, even though some sections feel like they have some kind of broken English, it feels ambiguous and you're not even sure if what you're getting out of it is what they meant to have in it, it doesn't matter. It's an artistic creation and what happens, sometimes it takes on its own life and uh, what you get out of it is what you get. Putting all that aside, you know, musically, I find them very exciting. And it's interesting, as you said, you know, to see what's going to come next from these girls. And I'm, I'm 
fairly sure we're going to get a lot more requests for them. So that's pretty cool. As we were listening to the song, something about the tune and just the way it rolls reminded me of a different song, a song from early to mid 90s from a band called Powderfinger, an Australian band. The song is called Grave Concern. And I think there are elements that are very similar. It might even be influenced by it. For some reason, it just kept popping into my head. I'll add a, a link to it in the description so people can have a listen and make up their own mind. But uh, Powderfinger are one of my favorite bands, so uh, I don't mind that at all. As I've mentioned before, their uh, music is grabbing, which I love about them. And as you just uh, mentioned, uh, their ambiguity is a strength. And those two elements alone just makes me uh, excited to listen to more of their songs because you know you're going to enjoy it at least on those two levels. Thank you, Dan, for this request. We appreciate the support and we hope uh, many more are on the way because this band is very interesting. Thanks, Dan, for requesting this song from the Sixters. We enjoyed reacting to it and we're actually still thinking about it. Thank you. More like this, please. If you enjoyed this episode, guys, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and click the little bell icon so you'll get notified on all our future videos. If you have a request you'd like bumped up the line, please make it through Buy Me A Coffee. All contributions are, of course, very much appreciated. Thank you all for sticking with us. Thank you all for your time. Thanks a lot, guys. As always, we appreciate the support. We hope there's more coming. And um, yeah, we'll be back in a couple of days with a new episode, and we hope to see you all then. Thanks again. See you soon. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.